Hello everybody, I am your lady killer, the one and only Master Roshi, and today I'm gonna talk about the brand new Dragon Ball Z Tankai Budikai Ichi 4, or now known as Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. So, let's get right into the review! One of the coolest things I saw in this trailer is the motion blur or speed lines. I think it would be really awesome if they decided to add in more smooth transitions from side to side, scene to scene, or from move to move. I really think in this game, if they can do it right and correctly, we could start having better movement animations than Fortnite did. One of the things I think is most important to enemy fighting games is the scene animations. And what I have seen in this trailer is, I am absolutely blown away by how the animations have turned out to be. And I generally think that they will keep the consistency of the animations throughout the whole game. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but usually when they have big quote-unquote reveal trailers for new video games that are coming out, they tend to not deliver what they promised in the trailer. Like... Cyberpunk, Starfield, Fortnite Chapter 5, Call of Duty 3, Pokemon Go, and Watch Dogs. But in this trailer, they show not only scenic animations, but they show some very clean movements in the body models. It's really the small things that count, and one of those small things are actually the stages. From what I can see, is that the environment is interactable and destroyable. If they don't mess this up, the area will stay destroyed. It's what makes you feel powerful, especially in the Dragon Ball world. Xenoverse kind of did it, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot started really doing it, but I hope that in this game, they really start digging into the details of interacting with the environment. Oh, maybe throw some easter eggs into the maps as well. Alright Bandai, I have some demands. And one of those demands is to have really good jiggle physics. Those bakeries you call booties to be very big. And those chesticles to be the size of watermelons. I want to be able to play with lots of cute girls with luscious lips. I want to be able to press E to give a little smack, press F to squeeze, and press shift to fuck. Okay, okay. In all seriousness, I think the video game would possibly be more fun and better if the maps were not open world and be in sections or arenas to possibly load in more quickly and to up the quality of the map. If they do the open world option and loading takes longer, then they should add in playable loading screens. And or if during the online multiplayer part of the game, they should automatically add in the playable loading screen. I also want their hair physics to be pretty realistic, and I want it to flow with the air. I seen a little bit in the animation with Vegeta when going super fast with his hair is still as a brick, but when he's moving up or down, I notice his hair is flowing realistically, which is what I do not want. One thing that I feel the need to notify you guys is that when Dragon Ball Sparking Zero comes out, there is a strong possibility that a lot of people from the Dragon Ball Fighter Z community will move over to this game. And I think the reason why they would move over to this game is because there's a lot of characters on the roster that is available, or possibly available, up front. And it's going to be twice as big than Dragon Ball Fighter Z. So just kind of be prepared for that. I think this just about wraps up the video. I do have high hopes for the game, and I do really think it is gonna do well. And when the game gets here, I will start a gameplay on my channel. So I hope you guys look forward to it. But yeah, if you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to hit that notification bell and click all. And, well, thank you for watching. See ya.